Ja. Ja. EMT. Das finde ich. Ja, Reino? Thank you, Madam. Mr. Ikini, uh, let's start uh, with the cross examination on behalf of uh, or in respect of accused number two, Mr. Dance. You, you testified before this court that at the time when he was arrested, which was the 16th of June 2020, if I'm not mistaken, there were many pending cases against him. Am I correct? No. Um, well, you're not correct when you say pending. My understanding <coughs> of pending means the matter is enrolled. There were no matters that were enrolled and okay. pending against Mr. Dance. There were cases that were identified and it was a personal interest on those matters. So they were not pending. Okay, so what, what was the status of whatever that you have? Were they cases? What was it? So that I can be able to refer properly to those dockets. I need the status of those case dockets. My Lord, I've said, um, when, when accused one and two's name were brought to us as being involved in this matter, cold case analysis was done and the number of cases where there were persons of interest, in other words, suspects, other than this matter, were then identified. So, but there was no pending matter, because my understanding of a pending matter is a matter that is before court. I'm answering in that context. But there were cases where he was a person of interest, um, particularly the one of Nongo Madat Sajjan Mohani pursued him on, um, and, and others that came up, my daughter. Umani Bopa Umbanga Lolo Esmini Gwa Kate Una Manya Matala Anga Gwa La Umbanga Lolo Esmini Ubega Te E Hamba Gwa Uti Uprika Jirka Ama Tala Awa Ega Te Enga Gafa Gwa Enkanto Uma Uti Ama Tala Anga Gakre Gwa Minango Gwa Minkabang Uti Ushu Uti Ama Tala Ase Afa Gwa Enkanto Otwa Beguna Manya Matala Esa Penywa Gunga Gakre Gwa Ogu Penywa I would be angry at you. angry at you. In Kanto. Okay. As a court case, my lord, we don't want to interfere with my colleague's cross-examination, but we just want to get clarity. At the inception of her cross-examination, she mentioned that she's conducting cross-examination on behalf of accused number two. Uh, counsel for accused number two has already conducted cross-examination. I uh, suppose it might be just a slip of the tongue that it was meant to mean on behalf of accused number five because no two counsel can cross-examine a witness for the for the same accused yes miss ma'am shorul yes the court please my lord i submit my lord with the due respect that i am entitled to cross-examine the witness on the evidence that he testified on on behalf of on behalf of accused number two as i'm cross-examining on have you read the case of by Hatzenbeck State versus <coughs> well, who's this gentleman? The Doctor Death. What's his name, by the way? Basson. State versus Basson. Have you read that case? No, my lord. It's, it says exactly what uh, your learned colleague is telling you that uh, in one case you cannot have more than one cancer cross-examining on behalf of a, a person who is said to be accused so-and-so. Only one person can do it at a time in the same trial. My Lord, if the court is of the view that I should not do cross-examination to this witness, I won't have any questions. No, no, it's not the court. You know what, just go, hello. Just go and fed that case of state versus son. <laughs> Basson, State versus Basson, it's by Hattenbeck. Let's just pause and read it because I'm now being accused that I am denying the opportunity to cross-examine. It's not me. No, it's not the accusation, my lord. I, I respect the, the, the court. Why don't you check it? You've got a computer there, Mr. Baloy. My lord, we don't even need check to go it. there. No, 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 we have to. Um, maybe. That's a very good judgment, my lord. Hello? 
it's a very long judgment. No, 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 no. no. We just the whole afternoon and the whole ah, we just morning extrapolate morning. the ratio. Are you aware of it? Yes, I'm aware. The, of it. Am I yes. correct in saying it? It says that. Yes, my friend. Unless, unless, unless there was a, yes. there was a, an exception which was made by Judge Hattendeck because they were busy with a case which was in intricate and it was voluminous. Yes. And he said, on the basis of that, he will give an indulgence to render an exception. But generally, once a counsel is being <laughs> is cross-examining a particular person, you see what Mr. Mcholo says. He says he's cross-examining on behalf of accused number two. That's what you are saying. Is that not so? Hello. My lord, if the court says I should not cross-examine, I, 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 I no, will proceed. No, you, you keep saying the court says. I'm saying the law says. As the court says. So let's read the law. But, but you know what? If you phrase it some other way, it could be permissible. But if you're saying you cross something on behalf of excuse number two, when Mr. Gomezulu already said that, and he knows Mr. Gomezulu, I told him that he can't do it because Mr. Ramosipiri had already done so, you remember. But I said, because we are coming into, into the case for an exigency of fairness, I'm going to relax that rule. And I can even do it now, but people must understand that it is not I saying that. It's the law. That's the court business. Just read that. Mm. In the meantime, what? Mm. Okay, fine. Mm. Umbozai Manje, Jemoba Ossis, a Sugmela Paranusa, where to Sayofuna wanted to put the Uzo Fundwa, Nayan Candor, O Casella, O Meli Uya was Nay, Utuya was the Umanga in Candor Ishon Jano, Uti Nega Abenin was Gordo, Usadin the Noyum Teto, who was the Gunga Bimati, O Judge Agafuno Uti, who made the Akbe. Yeah, incidentally, Hudson Beck was a judge in this division. He, re he retired somewhere 2000, I think 2004, somewhere there. And he was actually the most senior judge at that stage by experience, although he was not the judge president and neither was he the deputy judge president, if I recall. Mr. Um, Baloui, we'll, we'll check that we can proceed on the basis that you don't get that decision. It's, it's, we, we do. It's, it's so what's your problem? It's, re, it's referred to in several... We, we do have the decision, my lord, but we're just looking for the paragraph. There are about four references to the case. And uh, we're still searching for that specific paragraph, my lord. But we just thought that to save time... No, no, no. You can't save time by not doing the right thing. Because we'll look for... Mr. Minister, you don't find, you can't find that decision. On the head, on the head note. There it, are two uh, judgments, one from Judge Vegas in the here and the one from the Constitutional Court. Yeah, yeah. No. Comes into, uh, yeah. Do you have both of them? I mean, 
Yeah, yeah quote it, quote it. What said. Said. That's it. Mr. Ms. Mshololo is not aware of those judgments. You didn't read that judgment after I quoted it for you. Like a Hudson Bay. The red state versus Walter Basson. Walter Basson, yeah. Yes. But in fact, that judgment goes further than what I have just said, because I am saying the general principle is that two councils in the same matter cannot conduct the cross-examination of a state witness on behalf of a client. Here, the client is represented by Mr. Gomez, but the ratio in that case, it says uh, two, two, two councils acting for one client can't do that. You, they've got to divide themselves. But here, as I say, there is a slight uh, nuance in the sense that uh, okay, I've got the judgment here. S versus Basson, 2001, 2, SACR 537 T. This matter was hit on the 30th of July, 2001, by Hudson Beck, R. The head note reads like this. Fly note, trial, dash witnesses, dash cross-examination, dash of accused by more than one state advocate, dash long and complicated case concerning two separate groups of charges, cross-examination by two state advocates, allowed on certain conditions. Head note, during the trial of a law and complicated case the state applied before the accused was to testify for permission for the accused to be examined, cross-examined by two state advocates. The state, the state's legal team consisted of two groups, two of the advocates handling the charges of fraud against the accused and the other two advocates handling the other charges. Whilst one group was busy with its part of the evidence, the, of the evidence, the other state advocates were not present in court. The state contended that there were in effect two separate cases before the court and that the case was an extraordinarily one in which a mass of evidence had been led. The court referred to the rule of practice which prohibits the cross-examination of a witness by more than one legal representative of a particular litigant. But held that there were some exceptions to the rule where the courts had held that they had a discretion to allow a deviation from the rule. The court was of the opinion that although the case had two legs, 
there was a measure of overlap, a refusal of the application would prolong the case. The court accordingly upheld the application on the following conditions. One, that the leaders of the two groups of state advocates be permitted to pose any further questions after they had finished cross-examination and his colleague had begun his part of the cross-examination. The advocates had to determine who would first cross-examine over lapping evidence and one advocate who first cross-examined on such an aspect completed his cross-examination on that aspect and no further examination would be allowed by the other advocate of the aspect unless substantial reasons could be provided for deviating from the rule. Actually, the, the gravamen of this rule of practice is to avoid a repetition of cross-examination. Like for instance, the question Ms. Musololo has asked you, it was asked. It was asked and answered by me. I know, I know. I can repeat it. It was asked. Indeed. Now we are being asked that question for the second time, in other words. But you know what? I'll, I'll bend the rule, do it again. You can cross-examine, but you must know that that law says that. So I'll take it for granted that maybe you have some information or facts which you predicate your cross-examination on. Because remember, at this stage, we are on a trial within a trial, the admissibility of a trial within a trial. And just for another legal precept, just a one. There is a case of, and it's not me saying that, it's the law books. There's a case regarding admissibility. When issue of admissibility is to be determined, the duty of the presiding officer, the duty of the presiding officer is to keep inadmissible evidence out, not to listen passively as the record is turned into a papery sump of appropriate to some situation. A, a preparatory sump of evidence, sorry. Frequent practice of admitting evidence provisionally though appropriate to some situation often works unfortunately. The case, you can take the, the citation. The case is State versus Rama Valley. Rama Valley, 1996, 1, SACR 639 AD. The judgment was written by Schulz. He was sitting with uh, her and others. Okay. I said you can continue if you want to. <laughs> but the proviso, obviously, is that uh, if the question has been asked and answered, this judgment says I mustn't allow it. Okay. At the court business. Brigadier, is it correct that under the Nongoma case 136, sorry, sorry, not 136, 163, stroke 10 of 2018, which was being investigated. At the time when accused number two was arrested, you did not, you were not in possession, or you did not have a warrant of arrest against accused number two. I've answered it, my lord. On my, uh, answered, they are treated in evidence in chief yeah. and under process termination. Yeah, that question was asked. And I think you said the person who arrested uh, the gentleman I mean, accuse number two, as a result of the investigations pertaining to the murder in Nongoma, 
Was Sajan Mohali. Correct. In the campus of Sajan Mohali. That's it. So that question has been answered. Thank you, ma'am. In Cantolo il Fundi de Loyam Teto, Nangoko, in Cantolo il Fundi, the Ite Ulungile, who made Angasa at Kubeke, Nangoko Loyam Teto, Uti, the Wamele Uma Funiela, Utabuze, Mibuzo, or Jamaba Umelox Gobuzi. Uma Ebuza Manja, Ubuza Uti, any so good in Alice Cati, Niobopa Umanga Lois Bin, Nanga, the Ninning and Nayo, Ingwa, the Epunyaza, Ubutumanga Lois Bin Abosh. And until to date, as you are testifying, there is no warrant of arrest that has been authorized against accused number two under this case. I've answered also that, my friend. Are you going to a cunyaza or bosh of manga that always been autopricated? Nalombus, sing out him. Sorry, just, just to be fair to Miss Msholo. Were you in court when the brigadier testified when asked questions by Mr. Mgumezulu pertaining to the J 50s? Yes, that the J 50s were issued for each and every accused. Correct, my brother. And those are warrants of arrest, which enable this brigadier to take these guys to court after arresting them. I'm just saying, I listen. So there were five actually warrants of arrest. And you are putting it to him that up to today, there was no warrant of arrest issued for accused number two. So the evidence shows that, and I'm not giving evidence, because I'm being accused, I interfere, I give evidence. The evidence which I listen to by this witness is to, is to that effect that a warrant of arrest was issued by him and right. that you applied for the warrant of arrest on application to a magistrate in Boxbeck. Right, yeah. My Lord, maybe uh, I referred to case 636, which is the case that we are dealing with here. But my question was... Okay, fine, fine. My question was intending to ask in respect of case Nongoma case 136, okay, my lord. Not yeah. the one that, Brigadier, I'm not referring to the one that you are currently busy with, which yes. is false to us. Yes, my lord, but even that, it was, the question was put to me by Advocate Ngomi Zulu about exactly that, the status of Nongoma 163 um, of 10, 2018, and I've answered. It was a similar question, my lord. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, I was in Nongoma. And also, under the Nongoma case 289, stroke 11, stroke 2012, which is the docket that was given, supplied to us. Also in that case, there was no warrant of arrest at the time when accused number two was arrested until today. Yes, there wasn't one. Same thing with the third case, which is Foster as case number 88, stroke 06, stroke 2012. Yes, ma'am. Nale Nale Kala Lila Foster Nalo. Okay. Okay. It's fine. Let's move on to the statement that was made before Colonel Boto. Colonel Boto testified about the statement that he took on behalf of accused number one. Do you, are you following? I'm listening, my lord. Yes. yes. My question there is that looking at the time, or maybe if I can just remind you, the statement was taken on the 30th of May 2020 at 2145. Correct. Yes. That's a starting time, my lord. The statement is it hard to wait in the 30th of May 2020 or quarter to. Okay. Am I correct also to say it is alleged 
that the accused indicated that he wanted to make the statement during the day? Um, alleged by whom, my lord, that oh. he wants to make a confession during the day. I'm not aware of it. Okay. It didn't so now go to be good tea way, good number heavens, abe ate, umanga lelo begate, yena angatanda, ugu kunyuluga, a mini, uti ubregati rubani, ubegate, ena ekuma lelo. Before the statement was taken by Kenyan Boto, it would have came to your attention that the accused had indicated to make the statement. Yes, my lord, and I, I testified about this. Yes. Apam Boguti Apulmeno Kenyan Boto, Besese, Wena, Uno Luas, Boguti Umanga Lelo Begate, Ufuna Ukulumau Tiebo, Besese Nkaninang Ufagas Balo. And at what time of the day did you become aware that accused wanted to make the statement? My Lord, I testify about this. I even disclosed my diary, which indicates the time when I was informed, leading up to Foster meeting uh, accused number one in Foster outside the police station. Testified about this in evidence in chief and, and under cross examination, right up to the time this confession was taken by Colonel Bottom. Was any way now Uguti Umanga Lelwa Ubegate, Efuna Ugu, and the statement, Utu Pregatir? Mina Besesen Kazi, the law Congos in Gandolo, Sugela Escatini, Umanga de Lang Zebinazi, Swap Figella, Aze Ayens, and the Sustan Mendi, Besesen Kazi, the Uman Gitana of Bagas Ban, Nano Mangisonio and Mibuzo, Yenga Kazalo. Why, according to your knowledge, why accused number one was not taken to the magistrate? to make the statement. My Lord, it was Saturday. If you look at the date of the theater, of, theater of May, it was Saturday. Um, I met him, I think, around 1900 hours. I've testified about this. I'm not sure if you can find a magistrate around that time. So that's the, fact, that's the first part. But second, my Lord, commission officers carry the same um, powers as, as, as justice of peace um, into fact taking the confessions. That is the essence of the matter. Unga numanga dolo kala yenanga sanya aiswe kumanchi ubuza ayen statement sake utu prikati ruma pendo la bekati kungu mukdelo uya kumbulu kuti wa sanga na numanga delo ngabo seven tambama la iguti age kumanchi o seven zayo ngale soskati kuto bonge e iguti bane kunya lo kutata i statement na bobaya fana bane 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 kunya elfana na bomanchi. Thank you. If the accused, if it is correct, then the accused had indicated freely and voluntarily that he wants to make the statement. Why was it necessary that it is done at night? Why didn't you wait for the following day for the accused's statement to be taken? No, but, but my Lord, where is that regulated? There's, there's someone who wants to confess um, in a complex matter that I'm seized with. He's aware of his constitutional rights. He wants to make this confession freely and voluntarily, and one makes an attempt to find an independent office, and that person is found. Why would you want to delay uh, the taking of that? I, I'm not aware of a provision that says you must wait until the morning. Manje, umai ngabe umanga lelwa ye na waega te efuna ukul maganjalo. Unga anike guyeba hotel e wobuti ayenze statement sake ebsu. Uti ge uprika dirmina angna angna wo umtetongo wazio oti. Umuntu may funa wens statement wa mene gulinwe langel zayongoba, bega te funu wenza is statement wikala elif gai manje gunga and wamene sim lindo wuti sienzo ilanga elande nayongoba no mundu funu kuma manje kunga ni be wamele simele ilanga elande nayo angwazu teto o shoja. And that that was done so man, that was done so cancel to speak over you. It was in the interest of justice because it cut both ways, my lord. It's also the interest of justice that when such evidence comes to you. You must collect it as professionally and as adequately as you can to build the state's case because that's what I was assigned with this matter for. Forty gelok on the Gwen Zemina Gipege, Ubulungi, Swa, Goba Umtet, Utuame, the Gupe, where Ubulungi, Swa, Uma, Busech and Zangamata. And the accused at that time, I'm talking about the time when the statement was made, which is 2145 minutes up to 12 o'clock when it was completed, allegedly. The accused was supposed to have been sleeping by that time, resting. 
My Lord, I don't know how Kansel knows the pattern of, uh, I don't know the pattern, maybe I should answer this way. I don't know the sleeping pattern of Atkus number one. <laughs> Let's start, man. The scenes where episode go go quarter to ten. Put your figure in the in the tabosa. Oti umedi umanga le duanga le suskatu bego amene kube ulele. Prika diru tanga zoto la la mabatska. And at the time when you became aware that accused number one wanted to make the statement. Were you with the accused or you were informed by someone else? My Lord, I testified, I, I testified about this. I was cross examined about it as well. I was informed by Sergeant Mukula that what I indicated okay. an arrangement then we made for us to meet at Postoras uh, Police Station. I was informed. I testified about this and I was cross examined by Mr. Mukomezi about it. Ngales kati umbanga lelwa efuna ukuluma waugate una yena uti ngosi mkantolu besese nkazi hile Ngales kati mbozo wa ubabu mungo mezo luguti mina ngienga azi iswa usate ni mkula ngales kata ukutu umbanga lelwa efuna ukuluma Is there a written statement or any written note wherein it is recorded that on such and such a particular date accused number two after his rights had been explained, he indicated that he wanted to make a statement. Well, to me, yes, it's recorded, my lord. It's recorded in my diary, um, and I testified about this, and I gave the copy of my diary to cancer, including Ms. Advocate Mishololo, and they read the original, which I still have. It's indicated that I was informed at a specific time, what time I met the accused, the issues of rights are indicated there in the diary, and, and I've made the copies to, to the defense available. Ukona na labu barwe kona ugutinge skates tize umanga lolo esbini ye na ubega tefunu kwenzi statement na uti yebo Sengu shilo loko futi mbuziwe na ngako imibuzo Nge shilo ugutinge kipale ui diary ya mi diary e guti Ngenga nigeza umshushisi waniga na ba milbonke na ye umamsho lolo una Is there a space where in accused number two signed in that entry that you made? signed that he is indicating to you that he wants to make the statement. My Lord, I'm not aware of that provision. I've never seen an accused that must sign in the police diary that he wants to make a statement. I have, I've, I've never come across such a provision. la ibutu manga lelo usaine kona kui diary yako uguti ye na waega tefele uwenza efunu uwenza leso statement de sinjalo uti ngosi yangantol genzoni pengulu mina angaze ngabonu mchetu oti Okay, so As a policeman, can we get clarity? Is counsel referring to accused number one or accused number two? Because she's been cross examined. It's cross examining interchangeably. One. Now um, she's referring to accused number two. If we can just get yeah. clarity. It's earlier she said accused number one. Now she's now on number two. My lord, the statement that was made to Colonel Mboto is for accused number one. Yeah, I'm just answering uh, your learned colleague. It's for accused number one, the statement that was made to Colonel Holt. Yes, go on. Thank you. Whether you know the procedure, we know the procedure, I just wanted to know that there is no way wherein he acknowledged or he signed the entry that you made in your diary. No, no, but this witness says there is no such procedure. So if you know the procedure, put it to him so that we make progress. That as the procedure dictates or the law dictates that. As the court business, my lord. Brigadier, is it not the procedure that when you are conducting interview with the suspect, you will have a performer in front of you, wherein when you follow that performer, I think we are familiar with that, you will explain the allegations the constitutional rights, and then you will record the response given by the accused after the allegations had been explained to him. My Lord, counsel is referring to a warning statement. That's what you're referring to. There's a difference when you meet someone on the street, whether you're executing the warrant of arrest. You have never, there's never been a situation in my life, my Lord, where you're carrying a warrant of arrest. Simultaneously, you will carry the interview form and say, this is the warrant of arrest, I'm arresting you. Now I must take you through the warning statement. It doesn't work like that. That's not how it's supposed to be done. You meet the person, first is the arrest, 
the constitutional rights in terms of what he is entitled to, you deal with that part. Subsequently, when the detention and the time to prepare the person for court, that form kicks in. But you can never make an arrest and simultaneously at the time when you're making, a, you're making an arrest, take the person through the warning statement. It, it's not admit, it's not available. Utige umedi ingwa tile eye mipuzo ube ugate unayo unje ngwa ba ugate utanga na nomanga na desu ufrega tiruti aikaze ya enzega e mpilwe nisolo boye na kui poisa la hivi kupeti ngwa ti efu nyaza uboshwa kwa msolo bese kuba na le eye mipuzo utika ayenze igileyo gya ye kube no kutumundu kube na le ngwa te kunyaza uboshwa kwa kibese achelwa ama lunge lwa kikotwa leyo kuti ayo klonya imi buzo ka nini aksi nwati e kuti unubano kuti baipate iskulu kazi umabe yotangano mundu emga kwe I put it to you brigadier that that is this procedure that is the standing procedure by SAPS that whenever you are conducting an interview or not necessarily that you whenever an interview is being conducted with the suspect. Immediately after he has been arrested, when there is interview that is conducted, it must be recorded. And that form is assisting to ensure that the constitutional rights of that person are not infringed. No, but, but I disagree, my lord. Council is talking about the, the product that is at a later stage. Um, it's well known, my lord, that people get arrested with or without the warrant, even by uniform members on the street. The, those members who arrest them on the street, they don't carry warning statements. They will arrest them on the allegation that they, that is before them or the evidence that is before them, take them through the, the, the holding cells where they are processed on the ACP 14, 14A, and kept them. Then the investigating officer will come either on that day or the following day, then take them through the warning statement. But by the time the warning statement kicks in, police have already dealt with them in terms of the arrest. And question may have arise. They would have even maybe followed alibis in terms of what they are saying or followed certain information. So that is not correct that when you arrest a person, that form must simultaneously kick in. That's, that's not how it's done. What you may get in your previous and your was so what you um tell to us place or what you woman your book or moon to in what lay over maybe a bit or what you car a Wednesday put it in a map for his angel my buy a bio book or moon to bang up and I in what the kunyaza or boss or what you got by the Amy Buzo a good for me some of what you baby now you go about but figure about more hello much you know your best so we are booze or game me booze or as this when he Fairmost, I can just add sort of answer that even when the person is arrested for the first time, first time they, his, his or her constitutional right are explained to her verbally. But the formality of those constitutional rights matter kicks in at at the holding cells when the SAP 14A is completed. So it doesn't mean that when the 14A is completed at the holding cell, it is the first time the person has been made aware of his rights. When he's arrested, it's a procedure that he must be warned according to his constitutional rights, but no form, no one goes around carrying the SAP 14 form alone. Same with the warning statement. That is done at a later stage. Fortige, we are in Zegano, but you Atebi swenga malunge loaki uma ebo swanga pande estremka kweni bese itu maese se maseli uma ezo tebi swa footinga malunge loaki bese gula butu aliswa le nwati le aliko ipo isa elhamba di pete inwati emka kweni. Let's leave let's leave that for the argument, uh, brigadier. Let's move forward. Mm. Is it also correct? <coughs> that you ask Constable Munare of Metropolis Eworulene to accompany the team that was transporting accused number one. I've, I've dealt on, the, on the 30th, of, on the 30th uh, day of May, when specifically he was taken to Kenyan Ward. Yes, I've dealt with this matter. Okay. Manje, it is on our good way now, Brigadier Yawa Taylor, who can Munareng, Poisa Munareng, Law was seven was seven a Gurleni Metropolis, Ugutahambe, no Mangalewa, 
njengoba bekugade kuyiwa kuthemela umbotho uthi bese sengupendulile lo. And what I want to find out from you is the instruction of the duties that you requested constable monareng for. Because <coughs> because he testified that he was asked to give protection to the team. By team, I mean the SAPS members. So as Metro, he was asked to give a escort to the team. That's why I'm asking you to clarify for me that what is it exactly that he was asked to do at that time when accused number one was taken to Kenan Board. My Lord, I dealt with it. I was cross-examined about it, I testified about it in suffice evidence in chief's consent. I dealt with it that I phoned him, we met, I handed the accused to him, explained, I, I dealt with it, my lord, and, and, and questions yeah. were put to me and I've answered Yeah, that. can you answer my question? Because I want to know what is it that, that you ask him to do, but specifically, I've answered, Constable uh, Bonare. I've answered consent. Are I've you refusing to answer the question? We are a police officer. We are a member of the police officer. You are bound to repeat this answer and answer my question. What is it that you ask specifically other than what he said in this court? No, my Lord, uh, with greatest respect to counsel, I'll repeat it again. I've said, I asked Constable Monareng to assist with the escort of accused number one from the provincial office to Kenan Mbote. They were not involved in that regard. Subsequent to the completion of the confession, I further asked him to escort the investigating officer in so far as the matter of accuse number one is concerned, Mokola, with what she needed to do up to the time that they were detained. That is in so far as my activities with Ms. Gonsabun Manare. I testified about this in evidence in chief, and I think I dealt with it extensively also during the first examination. So it's a reputation, my lord, of what I've said. Oya pinda ye obrigadiri obufagazi obega se sega panengabo uti ukazi le bo munarengo uti ahambe mtembula kwenye mo bagua kati kuhanju somba ngada na ukala bo bo kainel mboto base aya buya apinde ahambe mtembula kwa abuashi la iguti be bagua kati bazo yisumba ngada na kuona atupeye ahambe no sergeant mohola la bega te eyo tena kuona. The statement which was made to Colonel Boto was taken at the police station. Do you understand that, Brigadier? Mm -hmm. yes, was I'm taken at the station. I'm listening, my lord. There were members of the SAPS at the station at that particular time. My question is, why was it necessary for Constable Munareng to escort the accused to Colonel Boto when they are there were members of the SAPS who could have executed those duties. But that's not how it works, my lord. When, when, you, ask, when you ask someone to, to, to take a confession, someone must do the handing over. It, it's, so, so for that to happen, it means I would have had to speak to someone in Deep Roof who can assist me with that. I didn't have anyone. I didn't know anyone in Deep Roof. And Deep Roof Police Station was chosen by Kenan Motor, not by me. He said the, 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 the suspect can be brought into Deep Roof. So, um, I didn't know anyone, my lord, but the, the process is such that the person who wants to make a confession must be handed over by uh, a member so that then the officer that is taking the, con the confession will indicate who handed that person to him. It's a procedure. <laughs> A police station has a deep roof mina, ganga tenga as a moon to manage a big of a good chiqua, good holder, and a moon to open at the higher a police station has a deep roof. A deep roof nayo, a police station layer, which an elmbot or orte umang a little a little corner mina, ganga tenging as a moon to manage a moon to a figure a police station, quamele and years a lay away, which now moon to simulate a la, in a congenda tell of two umanare. Okay, let's move on. Thank you for, for that answer. Brigadier, am I correct to say at the time when the statement was taken by Kenneth Mboto, 
Kenan Boto was not part of the investigating team, and he was called by you, and you are the only person who had facts, information of this case docket that you are dealing with today, at that time. No. Um, so, so it's correct that Kenan Boto was not part of the investigation, I agree, but yes. to say I was the only one who was aware of the fact of this investigation, that's not correct. I've indicated, my lord, that it was prosecutorial driven investigation. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, I was not the only one. And part of the investigators also were privy to what is continuing the docket. So I was not the only person who knew about the docket. Let me rephrase it, Kenan. So maybe you did not understand it. I'm sorry, not Kenan Brigadier. You don't understand the question, sir? I understood the way she asked me, my okay. and I've answered I, it that way. I, I, am, I was saying, between you and Kenan Boto, at the time when the request was made, the only person who was privy with information and facts of the police docket, it was you. That's but what I, I meant to no, say. No, I disagree with you. You're talking about the facts of the docket, and I'm saying to cancel my lord, a lot of people knew, including the prosecution, that's why I indicated it was a prosecutorial driven investigation, including crime intelligence and part of the members of the team. So we brainstormed. When the docket was given to us, I have indicated, my lord, that cold case analysis was done. When you analyze, you dissect. So issues of the docket were not known only to me. Manje, we have to do That is catching up to me now. Um, man, I know who, 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 Oazio, Galelicana, Uprigate Ruya, Uti, Tabetna, see me not pen and Goba, Jemoba sing Shido, Uti, the Sipena, Simpuna, Nogushisa, Yinga Pongi, Tibe, Bakona, Abanya, Abazio, Timbalami, Abashushis, Nabo Besebazi, Bebu, Embu, Ebeli Pona, Elazio, Axi, Mina, and Gedwa, Obegate, Eazi, Galelica. So, are you suggesting that Kenan Boto? knew about this case when you when you called him no but my lord that's not what i said I, I've, I've answered this question really with due respect to counsel earlier that i agree with the notion that kenneth Botter did not know and was not part of this investigation the second part of my answer relates to me being the only person who knew about the docket and i'm saying prosecution knew about it members of my team knew about it all stakeholders who were playing a role in this matter knew about that matter Aksi mina a ukenel mbot waiga te engazi futi sing kazi de log ugut waiga te engazi ngale kana bebka te guna banye engi sebenza nabo naba shushis ukenel mbot yen waiga te engazi ngale I can see we are avoiding the answer. Let's move on and move on to the evidence of Constable Tapelo on a right. Can be specified in which respect the witness is avoiding the answer because he has answered to the question. <coughs> yes, Mr. Mbot. Uh, so long. My Lord, uh, uh, it's because, my Lord, it was even put, the question was put by this court on the, on the transcript, if I can just clarify the background of where I'm coming from with this question, my Lord on the appearances of the 13th of October, 13th of October 2023, under the questions by court, my lord. The question was put on page 81 to page 83 under the questions by court to say, at the time when you called Kenan Boto, you are the one who was in possession. Sorry, my lord. You were not in possession of the police docket. I would never ask that question, but not me. Listen to the evidence as I understand it. Let me just the brigadier testified that uh, after having consulted or interviewed is it accused number one, it's accused number one at uh, the at Protea. That's Phosphorus. Uh, that's sorry, Phosphorus. Phosphorus. Yeah, uh, confusing with number two. When he said he wanted to make a confession, you said to him, if that is so, you will find him an independent Correct. police officer who shall take your confession. 
And then as they were going wherever, you phoned Correct, to say to Mukhalin, Mukhanu. No, I phoned various individuals. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, yeah, you phoned several, and then you, the only person who you could get was Mboto. Correct, my lord. Yes. Right? And then you advised uh, Mohan, is it? No, no, no. On this one, I advised Monareng, my lord. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's it, sorry. Yes. That uh, yes. this taking of the confession has been set down before. Colonel Mboto at Deep Proof. And, and you say thereafter, at that particular time, you handed over the accused to, to them to take to Mboto. Correct, my lord. That's how I understood the evidence. My, my lord, can now, I how, should I, how would I say he didn't have the docket and blah, blah? My lord, can I just read the line as is, my lord? It's on the transcript dated 13 October 2023, yeah. on page 81, my lord, uh, line number. 20. Right. My Lord, it says, did you have a docket with you, sir? And then the answer, it says, no, my Lord, which you were given by Gininda. That's the question asked by court. Then the answer says. So I, was, I wasn't asking Gininda. No. Who was, who was I asking? My Lord, I had said the no, question. No, 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 no. Who was I asking? The question was put to Colonel Mboto. It's the question oh, yes, fine. to yeah, Colonel Mboto. Yes. yes. About Colonel Kinin. Right, yes. yes my Lord. And I asked him if he had the docket. Yes. Because if he said yes, that's what, that was the end of that taking of the, the confession. Because he's not supposed to be in, in, <laughs> in charge of the docket. Because it's assumed not to be part of the investigation. And it is assumed that he has no indication or knowledge about the investigation of that case. Of the case. Can we make progress, please? Yes, my lord. So my question to you, Mr. Kinida, is that at this time, the only person who had information about the police docket for the statement that was taken to, it was yourself, not Colonel Board. <laughs> but, my lord, I but yeah, you know what? I, I thought this witness says this was a prosecutorial driven exercise. They were having meetings and they are part of a team. And so it was not exclusively himself that was privy to the information which was in the docket because they worked as a team. Is that what you're saying, sir? That's exactly what I said, my lord. Uti uprika dirbe katebe seben zabayi kebu aksuye na yedwa obegate ebone noma eno lwazi lwetoko ubegate besebenza bayiqembu let's move on i'll leave that one for argument as well let's go to the statement that was made on the 24th of june it's a bit jj my lord to miss v cronier Ms. Kronje testified, I know you were not here, but I'll just refer you to what she, she testified and what she wrote outside this performer. That there were heavily armed police officers that she found outside his office. Do you understand that? I do understand. Yes. 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 According to your knowledge, how many police officers you had instructed to take the accused to Miss Cronje? No, this is my lord. Sorry, this is accused number two now who made the the statement to Miss Cronje. Mm. My lord, also this part I've covered in my evidence in chief. And I indicated, I'll repeat it again, my lord, that I did not designate specific number of protectors. I only spoke to Sergeant Mohan to arrange the movement of accused two from the police station to 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 box <coughs> the magistrate court. He then I'm aware that he made a use of SWAT for escort, but he coordinated that. I've, I've said this, my lord. Manje, when na prigati wau gati ushele amapoisa ainga ki. 
uti mi nangu kwa mnikumenje no sate mkani Gati ayise umanga lelua e box bag enkando Yena ngiazi uguti uyeno ye washena abandu daba abe swat Ugu zebazo mnetu Ugu dibebangaki angazi Ms. Pronye also further testified, we'll comment if you we do have an answer. Ms. Pronye also testified that he asked these members to produce their, their, their pocketbooks. And when he, she asked those members to produce their pocketbooks, they disappeared. Manu, that was not there. I, I can't comment on this. Uh, I don't know what you say. I, I was not there. Ute umanju kronye uye wakela. Nama poisa wukuti ba kipa ma pocket buwa bo bo na ba tena se wukuti ba ya nyama la la kona la po wutu prekati benga tenge ngenge ngwazo pendo la lo. Before the accused was taken to Miss Cronje, it is the evidence tendered before this court that he was firstly taken to Penen Rapadu on the 19th of June, which was before the making of the statement to Ms. Cronier. Yes. Are you following? Yes, my lord. Then I've okay. testified about that as well. No, just wait. Oh. Don't rush. The evidence in terms of the OBs that have been presented before this court is that or maybe I can just refer the witness to be quick, my lord. To exhibit MM. I've asked uh, the state to arrange the OB book for exhibit MM because I just want you to comment on the entries there. Um, which OB is this concern? For which police station? If I can assist. I've asked the state to arrange that uh, OB for the 19th. Yes, I do have the 19th, um, the, sorry, the OP of the 19th of June, 2020. Yes, the 19th of, of June, serial number 520. It's cross-reference 531. I'm not sure there's 531 or 537. You see that one? Yes, I see. Yes. The, the one for 230 which is 520. I don't know which one is the correct serial number for that entry. Maybe you can assist me there. Because there are two. So 531 is the one for 230. For 230. Yes. And then 570 is the cross reference. Um. For 520. No, five, five. so 530, my lord. 531 is the one where the arrival time is 0230. Okay. Yes. Which one you want me to assist you on? With that? And then this one, 520, is the cross reference. It's the cross entry. reference of that one, yes. Oh, okay. This is investigation back, so the 520 is when it was put out. Okay. Then let's deal with that. It shows, my lord, this entry has been a place on record uh, before. I'll just put the question straight to the witness. This one indicates that. The accused was booked back at 2.30 and then down after the, the same entry, which is entry number 5.32, he was booked, he was charged. And then if you go to entry number 5.34 of the same date, are you following? I'm listening, my lord. 5.34 at 4.50. The suspect is transferred, prisoner transferred, Sergeant Mohane of National Court case, uh, suspect murder on murder case 163, Bongani Dance. In a nutshell, it's a booking out of uh, Bongani Dance at that time. Do you see that one? I see that, my lord. That's, yes. what, the, that's what the OB reflects. Yes. Yes. And the further entry says, transferred to Fort Lauderdale Court without any injury or complaints. Correctly transferred. 
Yes, I see that, man. Go to your born or go to go by way over to um solo or transfer a little is poison is as a first lord as engine as or in powers of liman. Okay, so it means this aspect is booked out at this police station. That's what the OB means, my lord. Yes. Uti e o b e palwe ganjalo uti no mundo u transferi. And according to the evidence of uh, Sergeant Mohani, is that when he was booking him out here, they intended taking Mr. Ntanzi to force the magistrate court. However, on the way, they received a call from you that they must go to Morocco, Morocco Police Station for, for, for the accused to make a statement before Colonel Rapad. You correct me if uh, uh, it's not the correct facts. No, 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 it is correct. It is that correct. I, okay. that I made arrangements with Colonel Rapad. I'm yes. just not sure about the time, but at some stage, yes, I would have informed Sajjan Mohane uh, that yes. they must take accused two to Colonel Rapad in Morocco. Yeah. Yeah, boy, so good to you, Ubega de Usajan Mohane and Ehambi, Saum Solo, Sbini, a Morocco. Efos Loras, itema ba lebele ba hamba kula iguti wa inaprika tiru ya wa mshayu tu ingo uguti amise emuroka uti ya wana ngokonyege nkumbule iskati kutu wabunja alo uguti minange nga mshayu tu ingo gati amie na ye emuroka Okay, did you tell them where to go to with the accused where the statement would have been taken? Yes, I told them and then I can wrap up uh, I've testified about it, my lord, that I've then connected him to say this is the kennel that will assist you, and these are the cell numbers for Kenel Lieutenant and for Lieutenant Kenel Rapad. When I was here, Kulmanaye, who was a gentleman, 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 did you tell Sergeant Mohane to which police station should they go to, or they decided on their own? No, I, my lord, I, I did, I, and I've said this, um, I don't want to be seen as if I'm running away with the answers. I've testified about it in evidence in chief, dealt with uh, Mr. Mgomezu, Mr. Mgomezu, and I've just said it a few minutes ago, seconds, my lord, that I did tell them that they must go to Morocco ACPS. Mina ngibaje lile ukuthi kwamele baye esipoyiseni sasemuroka uku usajeni umhlali futhi bese sengichazile le yonto nanoma ngibuzwa imibuzo umeli umngomezu And then where is the OB entry for the Morocco police station is proof that he was taken to Morocco police station where in during that tension the statement was taken no, but, but, but it is incorrect that he was detained. When we talk about detention, we're talking about incarceration. He was not detained there. And, and the making of the OB, my lord, when the confession is taken, it's, it's, it's something that the police officer who takes it may decide to keep record. It's not a requirement that when you take a confession at a particular police station, you must necessarily make an, an OB entry. Can anybody choose to make one? I think there was one that was made by Lieutenant uh, Kenel Hadebe. In Albertin, um, in Morocco, there was none that was made, but there's no regulation that says you must make one. So that's the first part. But the second part, my lord, accused two was never detained in Morocco. So it's not correct to say he was detained there. Axlona, I can't say what you mean. I'll always be in Uye wa Boshwa, a normal word in Morocco, Uti Axlona, I can't say lelo manje. Indaba ye upala, umunt opala, we na ozketela, a wukumte, oti gwamele umagupal, umagumuno munto o shanganana, ukulmana in jenge poisa besa uya bala, kotwa, umunt opala, uya ye alketele and ubut apale, ubuza as the abe nalazo zindo egutis kulumi. I differ with you, Brigadier, with your respect. The procedure in the SAPS is that when a person is taken to the station, he will be booked into the books of that station. However, we have given the explanation that we have, we have given to the court. In light of what we have said to the court, that is not a procedure, it's not a requirement. Where is proof that this statement was taken at the time when the accused was at Morocco police station? 
My lord, um, I'm not aware. I'll come, I think I'll deal with the, with, the, with, with the answer to this question lastly. There is, that's why if you look at the performer, in terms of what I'm going to say, my lord, the performer for confession, there's not even a portion where you must insert an OB entry on that performer because it's a guideline of what questions you must put and what answers you must give. There is no portion where you must give detention OBs and ACP 14. It's simply um, the practice that other officers would prefer to say, let me make this entry and document in the OB what transpired. Now, that's the first part. The second part, my, my, my lord, if Cantel says there is a procedure in the ACPS, please can she just advise me on this? Because I'm not aware. There's no such standing order that says when you take a confession, it must be documented at the police station. What council also must know, my lord, when you take a confession, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean it must be at the police station. You can be called to this court um, and, and use one of the offices and document uh, and take the confession, the written down confession. There are no detention cells here. Where would you record the, the, the occurrence book? The guideline is the form, but then in terms of best practice, um, other officers will say, let's make an entry so that things are seen uh, to be, you know, some record that things were done in a way that suits him. And it will make things up for him or her when he testifies before God. Tige umedu upi ukufagaz oboni sayo uguti nesi statement senze lwe emroka. Ngoba uya utabisa uprigati ruguti umteko oshonjalo uguti uma uyi kwa isa kwa mele uboni iswe uguti lento le ewe yenzi le yenze lwe upi statement le si senze lwe upi uprigati ruya piga uti this statement is Nayenze Lanano Makupina lying and Dodo Mudanga Abizu, a Fabe and Gay Ovisel Tizer Abuzu Imibuzo, forty Agawas, Noma Awuko Umteto, or show you which you were made of Ubabe, who moon to Uyaya Apale, Yenangoake, Goguti Azenzele, Uguti Umagunyenze, Uguti Gutting, Uguti Azo Buzo, Bese Yena Uzbalele, Foto Aksu, Uti Umteto. Thank you for that information, Brigadier, but be that as it may, whether best practice was followed or procedure was followed, whatever the privileges the SAPS have. My statement, or what I'm saying to you, is that there is no proof before this court that this statement was taken at Morocco. Well, my lord, I think I think I think Lieutenant Kellen Rapadu is best vested to, to, to come and testify on those issues. The form indicates that it was signed at Morocco Police Station. There's a date, there's a time, there's a starting time and ending time. If then that is in dispute, I think Lieutenant Kellen Rapadu can best deal with cancer, my lord. Uti umeli abuko ugufaga zoboni sa uti le sister men de sitatelo emroka police stage. Kwa uti o pregatire utaba kuto mundo onga pendula lombuzo la ngonya na kungaba ulu kenen kenel rapad ngoba le sister men de sipale iskat uti kalo ngoba iskat. Pinda siya palo na uti sitatelo emroka ngoba iskat kwa kwa na ngoba iskat yena utaba uti ulu kenen kenel rapad yena mundo onga se eze. Thank you, Brigadier, with that answer. Let's move on now to the assault that was reported by accused number two in court, that he reported that he was being assaulted in a silver tin police station. You remember that portion of evidence? Um, I don't remember who to say he was a social like she's one, my lord. She's one, my lord. Oh, thank you, my lord. Sorry, my lord. Can I just clear the, the instruction, my lord? Thank you, my lord. To correct uh, the, the statement I've made, it is in respect of accused number one who reported the assault. Brigadier, my apologies for that. I'm referring to accused number one. Accepted yes. Yes. Is, is it correct that that information or that complaint about the assault was related to you as the head of uh, the unit? No, but that's not correct, my lord. I also dealt with this part. I yes. mean, we also read the chat sheet that no names are even, I even went in so far as saying the document speaks for itself. And that was when it was put by Mr. Mugumizuru that these are the people who actually assaulted uh, accused number one. My name was not mentioned there, but even then, I said in the charge, it, insofar as the charge it is concerned, 
the presiding officer did not mention any name except that it's SAPS, SAPD Silver Team. That's, that's how we dealt with it. And that exhibits, it's, it's clearly stating what I'm saying, my friend. Kutige, aguko la yugutugu palwe ama kama. Inkanto olonje e pale uguti SAPD Silver Team. Nama kama lawa akulunyewe kama liga prikatire ali kola li kazwe kona. Uh, maybe let me let me clarify it. I never said the reference was made about you. I said the information was related to you about the assault. No, no, that's, sorry. That's not the evidence before this court. The evidence before this court <coughs> is that uh, Sergeant, the lady, Sergeant Mohola, Mohola yes. was told that. Uh, accused was assaulted at Silverton Police Station. And this is a time of uh, COVID. COVID, correct. Right. Then he reported the exigency to you that uh, yes. I have a report which says accused number one was assaulted at the police station correct. in Silverton. Correct. I don't want to give, evi you, I don't want to give evidence. And then Thank obviously you, the concatenation <coughs> of events is that he, Kininda, said to Mahanu, go and interview the gentleman and assist him to lay a charge of assault. And the evidence says he refused. Thank I don't you, know, am I correct? Correct. Yeah, Thank you, my lord. Exactly that's what that's I'm that's relating that's to the witness, my lord. No, that's not say. exactly what you're relating. It's me the relating the evidence of the court. The information about the assault was related to you by Sergeant Mukhul about the assault. So that, it, that I was informed, that accused one is alleging that he was assaulted. Yes, yes I was informed yes, yes. By relating, I mean, the message was conveyed to you. Yes, that's what yes. I mean. Do you agree with that? Okay. I agree with that. And in terms of the procedure, if there, is, there are any allegations of assault by members of the SAPS, the people who are supposed to investigate that complaint is the IPID, which is the independent investigation unit. No, but th that's correct, my lord, but that does not prohibit uh, police officers to do preliminary investigations. I feel from time to time, the case will happen, it gets registered at the police station. When, once you see, once you are sitting with a docket where you realize there was violation of rights by police officers, you then refer the matter to I It does not mean that when someone comes and alleges that I was assaulted by the police, before you even take a statement, you now refer that complaint. That is a complaint. A referral of dockets by IPID, it's when there's a registered docket, a formal complaint with a statement under oath that alleges that police officers have done one, two, three. Then, that is why I said to Sergeant Mohola, once this has been done, register the docket, bring it to me, because then my decision would have been to refer the matter for further investigation with IPID, my lord. So we did not even arrive there because uh, uh, accused number one refused to make a statement I made my own inquiries right up to prison and there was no proof that there was such a sort. Kutige umeli uma une une skala zogu tu mundu ushawe ama poisa. Abadu wakwa mele ba penye ngane no kala. Aba penye aba zimele aba bizwa ye IP. Prikatiri usika ya tazu kutu kusebe nzeka ganja nige ukuze liyo figa ku IP. Uma umundu achu ushaiwe wa mele ku penye Ama poisa na lo ane kunya wogu tibanga penya bese baniga oba peti inga ako ye na uprigatiru ye wati usache ni mkola aye ayo penya ayo zisisa wogu tibwenza gele ni bese aleta ito kwa otuma inga bendi zofu lwa alete guye ye na uguze azol tata alise pambili wogu tibu penye kodwa impendulo ebu yile wogu tibanga lelo kala ye na azanyi amnige uluazi olipele le norma so this case was not reported to IP for the IP to investigate it further, those members. No, but what case, my lord? There was no case. That's, that's the point that I'm saying. You have to have, for the case, Kansen knows, you have to have A1, what you call in the docket, alleging what the allegations are. Then, subsequent to that, the docket will be registered. Then the referral, my lord, when police members are implicated, kicks in. Or if there are some issues with registration of the docket, but at least when we have a formal complaint, 
you can then deal with the referral to IP. But you cannot refer something that preliminary investigation clearly indicates that this is not true. How, how do you, there's no case in my head. Manje gelelo tala, ali zanyelo na litunyelo gula wa penye abazmele uprigadiru uti ba ki lipi ikala ngoba abu zanyo gube nekala elavolwa. Manje belizo isu waga njani guba penye abazmele kunye kunye na tala elivuliwe. Ngoba guyi isu anje ama tala avuliwe. My Lord, with the leave of the court, can I ask to pause here? Yeah, it's 15:20 now. There is too much heat where I'm staying. I'm standing. The aircon is not functioning, my Lord. I want to now move to the cross examinations on the AVLs and that evidence of those witnesses in respect of AVLs. Yes, my Lord. Mr. Baloy. Well, the court, if I may also report, the, the, the aircon is not functioning in this, uh, if we can be assisted, my lord, mm, yeah. in that regard. Thank you, my lord. Should we adjourn, sir? There is no order, my lord. Good. Are you available, Brigadier? I am available, my lord. Okay, the court will adjourn until tomorrow.